Shadow and I are 10,400 feet above sea level. And we're in an area where it is known all throughout this region to be a great place for rock hounding. And then tonight we're gonna to do some astrophotography. And these kind of skies at this elevation, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. We are outside of the Cedar Breaks National Monument. We are not in the monument. We are camping on national forest land. Rock hounding is permitted. Oh, and we're also with friends. We're camping together. Hi, Richard. Hello. <laughs> it's always fun to go out with friends. And let me do a proper introduction here. This is Dave from Endgame Campers. How's it going? And he builds campers hidden behind the trees back there. We'll show it more later. He builds the most remarkable campers by hand. He's a carpenter, a true <laughs> carpenter. They're so much fun to see you too, his videos as he builds them. So we're, we're just camping together tonight. And uh, right now we're just kind of out walking around and I'm doing some rock hounding. And he's not really a rock hound, but he's kind of helping me. I'm kind of, I'm helping, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning from the best. Just look, I do the same thing I tell Shadow, just look for the pretty ones. <laughs> what you find there, Dave? Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. You know, that almost looks, I mean, I'm sure it's agate, but up there along that edging, that almost looks like it might be an opal along the edges there. We, we can test it for softness, but I love the color. Oh, another one. Okay, these are, man, these are kind of like, a uh, little bit like what they call the um, fire agates down there by Saddle Mountain in uh, Arizona. Do you well, it goes along the, uh, up there, along the line, yeah. that's an FAA a radar tower. Radar We're going to make our way up yeah, there. The what do we have here? Oh yeah, this is this is a beautiful, a beautiful big piece. I have to clean that up and show it. That, that's a big beautiful agate. I will clean that up and show it. Gorgeous. Wow, look at that. Here's a here's a beautiful one. Here's the mother log right here. Yeah. What is that? See, that could be opal. Opal. Wow. That's what I'm thinking because That's opal, opal is so so an agate. The primary ingredient of an agate is silica, which is SiO2, uh -huh. silicon dioxide. Opal is SiO2H2O. It has water in it. And that gives it a little bit of a, if this is opal, a little bit of a softer and a little less lustrous look. That looks opal to me. We got to test it. I, I got to take it home. There's one right there too with the sunshine shining through it. It's so translucent. You can actually see light shining through it. We're making our way up the hill now, and we continue to find just unlimited amounts of agate. It's just everywhere. I mean, this really spoils a rock hound. <laughs> so we're gonna go all the way to the top of the hill. We'll see what's up there. Look at this really black one. When I clean that up, it'll, you can see it better, but that's just super black. Then I see something over here. That's a nice one. So we're starting to get more color as we get higher up on the top of the mountain. Really fun. Really, really cool. Oh, it's just so beautiful too. You can find shade here. Nice and cool. I mean, it's 112 in St. George right now. And I guess here it's probably about 72. This feels wonderful. Back to the beautiful color. So, I don't obviously go and So, I often find as you get towards the top of hills, you can find good, good samples, good specimens of the material that you're looking for. Usually, for me, it's something in the uh, silica family because the weather. 
wind and water has washed away a lot of the topsoil and it exposes it. It makes it easier to find and I am finding that as we approach the top of the hill. And I like this stuff, you know, that has some of that blood reddish color running through it. We'll look for some more of that. And here we see the rhyolite, volcanic rhyolite. And that's how this stuff is formed within the volcanic rhyolite. And okay, this tells you where we are. Dixie National Forest Blowhard Trailhead. Google Blowhard Mountain and you'll know where we are. So we're making our way to that FAA, I think it's a radar dome on top of this mountain. It's pretty cool looking. There was a forest fire many years ago up here and that's why you have these dead spruce trees. This is rock hounding at its best, is it not? Incredible scenery, amazing agates underfoot, and then some super high-tech alien looking dome thing on top of the mountain. It's like an episode of Star Trek. Okay, there's signs everywhere. FAA facility, people's lives depend on this. Constant surveillance. If you enter, you will be prosecuted. We don't have any desire to enter anyway, but we're not going to go any closer. You know, we're here to Rock County. We just thought it was cool, wanted to get up and take a look at it, but when we saw the signs, that's far enough for us. Do you want to see something ridiculous? That right there. That thing is ridiculous. He's had his head in these holes non-stop. Go into holes for little rodents. You are a filthy mess. Look at your dirty, dirty nose. Filthy, filthy mess. Okay, we've made it back to the campground. It is a bit windy. And here we are. Good old Dave. Just check this out, guys. This is just like the coziest camper. And everything is in there. There's a fridge underneath, power bank, solar panels on top, little desk set up there, and a kitchen sink. And it's got an AC inside that thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is one of the coolest things. Let me turn on the light inside here. All you. right. Yeah, maybe a good idea there. Yeah. Let him see My this. It's just all so cool. It's just so cool. I mean, this the whole thing. I love his builds. You got to check out his channel. If you come up here, bring a lot of water and be aware of the altitude. It affects me. I can feel the effects of the altitude, so be careful. We're going to um, spend the night here. We spent last night here. We're going to spend the night here. I'm going to set up the telescope right over there. We're going to do some astrophotography. Uh, but for this rock counting video, I'm going to go ahead and conclude it with this. We're going to take these rocks. We gathered a lot back. I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to show them to you. We're going to do a little bit of testing to see if there's some opal in there. And uh, yeah, this is a great spot. I highly recommend it. You know, a lot of people hear about Brian Head and the Agate Hill. This whole area is a great area for rock counting for agates. I mean, you just almost can't go wrong. Just pull off the road and start looking. So we had a great time, and we're glad you came along with us. We'll see you back in the laboratory. Welcome to the laboratory once again. 
my kitchen, which if you've watched any of my other videos, you've heard me say a kitchen is a laboratory, a laboratory. There's a lot of chemical reactions that take place when you're cooking and heating things and mixing things. So the kitchen is a great place to also test rocks. And that's what we're gonna do today. We brought back a lot of rocks, a lot more than what I'm showing right here. I just grabbed a few. The one question we had, or I had, is that some of this looked kind of like an opal. You know, it's a little less lustrous than many agates, and it looked a little softer. Looked a little softer, but there's only one way to tell, and that's to do a hardness test. And so we know it's in the family of, uh, of a silica-based rock, and an agate is silica, is the primary ingredient. That's SiO2, silicon dioxide. A, an opal is formed in much the same way as an agate, but it has one or more water molecules attached to that uh, molecular structure. So it's SiO2, H2O, or sometimes more than one H2O molecule. So let's test this, and we'll start off with an agate is typically you know, around between a seven and an eight. And when testing, it's important, first of all, to make sure you don't see, sometimes you leave a little bit of a mark that is actually the rock scratching off some material from the testing tool. And it could look like a scratch, but it's not a scratch. It's the reverse, <laughs> the, the rock scratched the tool. So when we test like this, it's important to kind of do a little rub and make sure that what we see, if we see anything, is a scratch. I'm not satisfied that I'm scratching. I am seeing a little bit of the tool. Let's move to an eight. Definitely see a scratch. So with a seven, I was getting a little bit of a mark that was a little bit of metal being left behind as I scratched the rock. This was being scratched by the rock. When I used a eight, then I couldn't see any mark with the naked eye because there was no metal being scratched off it. But when I looked under the magnifying glass, I could see a scratch. This is like a seven and a half-ish. Um, it is definitely an agate. So that is not opal and even though it looks a little opalish, that's agate. Now I also, before turning on the camera, I ran a magnet over all of these just for the heck of it, nothing, nothing magnetic. I also took them into a dark room and used an ultraviolet light in the low frequency range of ultraviolet light. I got almost no fluorescing, a couple little spots here and there. Um, opal sometimes is known to fluoresce. So uh, there was nothing there to indicate that this is something that I should go down a different uh, avenue to try to investigate. I think what we're dealing with here is good old fashioned agate. Uh, could be a jasper, uh, that depends upon the uh, translucency or transparency of it. This one here is quite dark and that would be a jasper, even though we found it amongst all the others. So I kind of put these together a little bit in kind of a color grouping. So here you can see these whites, and this has a lot of white, as well as a lot of other beautiful color coming through it as well, right? So if it were to break into pieces, you may get more of a white piece off of one end of it and a darker off the other. But then we kind of move into where we're getting more of these mixed with red. So is that an agate or a jasper? So let's see what happens when we shine a light you know, up to it. And you can see there's, there's translucency to it. Now, it's a thick rock, so it's not going to shine all the way through it, but it's shining through the edges. You see, if I were to slice that, that's translucent. That's what that is. Not transparent, but translucent. So I would throw that into the agate family. That one is very translucent and very beautiful. Shining a light through them, by the way, is fascinating. I look into these rocks sometimes, 
and I see things that look like what I see when I look through my telescope at objects thousands of light years away. I see similar shapes and things that remind me of nebulae and so forth. Let's just try this one here. See how translucent that is? So we are dealing with agates. And they range from this white to the, the darker reds that start to come out, all the way to where we could say, hey, now we have a jasper. And then we have some getting quite dark, even blackish. Let's shine a light through this and see what we get. Kind of cool. And then we get into a yellowish group and even orange. Look at that. As well as yellow. And some yellow coming out here. Oops. Look how translucent that is. Beautiful, beautiful material. A little bit thick, but nonetheless, you can see the translucent nature of it. And when you spray these with a little bit of water, and they really look even better. I think that's a beautiful one right there. But I've been up in that general area before, not that exact spot, but I've gathered a virtually identical material, and I have some to show you that I have polished up. And look how it looks under a light. Now it's a little bit of a thicker rock, but you can see that. It's just beautiful, beautiful material. That's Shadow scratching at his dog food bag. He's got dog food in his bowl. He just wants attention. Take a look at this one. Is that not just spectacular? How beautiful it is when it's polished. So I've got, you know, a bunch of these polished rock in here. No, no, Shadow. You've got food in your bowl. So this makes great material for throwing in the tumbler and polishing up. Shadow, stop it. Tumbling is a lot of fun. It's not hard. It just takes some patience. It's a fun hobby. But these rocks are beautiful in their natural state. They're beautiful tumbled. They're beautiful if you want to cut them, polish them that way, or cut them into thinner slices and throw them in the tumbler. Well, we had a lot of fun. We have determined we are dealing with agate, without a doubt, a little bit of jasper. We found a good location. And that location goes for miles and miles and miles. You almost just can't go wrong. Get up there around Cedar Breaks. Don't rock hound inside the National Monument. Uh, stay out on uh, forest land, National Forest land or BLM land and you, you, you won't have a problem. Uh, and just uh, look around. We had a great time. We really appreciate you coming along and hope you join us on Future Adventures of Shadow. You just want attention all the time. It's what you want. You want attention all the time.